This is a presentation about creating video and audio material and staying within the laws of copyright. Put simply, you're potentially infringing copyright by using material created by others. The exceptions are anything you've been given express permission to use and anything in the public domain. In addition, there are materials released under Creative Commons licenses and in some circumstances there may be a fair dealing defence for copyright infringement. I'll explain what all this means as we go on. First of all, here are some copyright myths. These are beliefs about copyright that I hear quite frequently but aren't actually true or need some clarification. I can use any material I want under fair dealing if it's for educational purposes. This is not generally true, it is also not really an issue of fair dealing, which I'll explain in more detail later. One confusion may arise from the similarity of the terms fair dealing in UK law and fair use in American law, which has more leeway for educational establishments. Fair dealing does give you some rights in regards to copying parts of printed material for personal study and research, but this does not cover audio and video recordings or making or distributing multiple copies. There are, however, exemptions to copyright for work copied for examinations under the Copyright Designs and Patents Act of 1988. This includes assessed coursework as well as sit-down exams. However, the work must be made purely for assessment and must only be given to lecturers and moderators or others directly involved in the assessment or examination process. It doesn't include work that will be shown to other students, shown at events such as an end-of-year show or put on the internet, which really limits the use of the work. You must also be very careful to credit all material correctly for the following reasons. First of all, the artist has a moral right by law to be recognised as the author of the work. Secondly, if you do not credit the author, it may be perceived that you are claiming you made the material yourself, which can be seen as plagiarism, a very serious matter in academic work. OK, so the next copyright myth. If there's no copyright notice on it, it's OK to use. Well, this isn't true at all. People sometimes get confused into thinking you have to apply to get copyright in the same way you apply for a patent or register a trademark. In fact, copyright is an automatic right for a content creator and they do not need to register a copyright or mark their material in any way. They're automatically afforded copyright when they create their work. If it's on the internet, it's in the public domain and I can use it. This is a misunderstanding of the term public domain, which I'll explain later. Just because something has been released on the internet doesn't mean it's afforded any less copyright than anything distributed by any other method. So, for example, using any images that come up on a Google image search is more than likely infringing copyright. If I've bought the material on DVD or CD, or downloaded it legally from the internet, I have the right to use it in my project. Well, this isn't true either. Paying for something does not give you the right to distribute it and remix it or reappropriate it in any way. You've only purchased a copy of it for personal use and not for any other purpose. If I try to get copyright and don't get a reply, I can take it as implied consent and I'm able to use the material. Again, in most cases this isn't true. Sometimes it may be the case that after considerable time and effort you're unable to track down the copyright holder. In this case you could use it as a defence, although it would be advisable to keep a file of the measures you did take to track them down, in case there were legal repercussions. But this isn't generally what people mean. They mean firing off an email or a letter to a known copyright holder, waiting a few weeks, not getting a reply and then using the material. This doesn't give you the right to use something. OK, so a few notes on fair dealing. There are limited areas where fair dealing may come into play. It's worth remembering it's not a law that gives you automatic rights, but defence for infringing copyright. They're basically rules that prevent free speech from being stifled, stifled by copyright in certain areas. Some of the main areas where fair dealing may be defence are criticism and review, using a piece of music or video or whatever for the purpose of criticising or reviewing it, Reporting factual events, so you may see news footage from overseas TV stations on the news when a big story breaks. Or incidental usage, so if you're legitimately taking video footage of a street, for example, you don't have to worry if there happens to be a poster or logo in view, as long as it just happens to be in shot. But there are various things you have to keep in mind. First of all, fair dealing is not set in stone and open to legal interpretation. It's at the whim of courts and case law as to what fair actually means in these circumstances. For example, clips must be of a fair length, but there's no real guideline as to what this length actually is. And all material must be very carefully credited for the reasons we've already seen. 
There are also strict limitations of what can be used. For example, for news coverage, the material must be contemporaneous with the news you are reporting. You can't just plunder archive footage for the sake of finding suitable images. And in the review and criticism example, the material shown must be the actual piece of footage you're reviewing, not just used to furnish your video with visuals. So if you were showing a review of the Avengers film, for example, you would have to have a good reason why a scene had to be shown, and not just edit together various sections of the film to look good in your work. Finally, material used must be from a legitimate source. It can't be acquired through deception or illegally. So I suppose one question you may be asking at this point is what can happen if you infringe copyright? Well, you could be prosecuted, and copyright infringement is a criminal offence, meaning you could receive a fine, a criminal record, or even be imprisoned in extreme circumstances. More likely is you'd get a takedown notice, meaning you'd be asked to remove the material under threat of legal action. As well as this, you may be unable to upload a video to sites such as YouTube. YouTube is becoming more sophisticated in detecting material that infringes copyright, and, and you may not be able to upload it at all. You may not be allowed to enter your work in competitions due to copyright infringement, and you may not be able to broadcast your work or show it at public events like an end-of-year show or, or another event. And as we've already discovered, failing to credit the original author correctly could lead you to be accused of plagiarism. And one final note is that copyright laws in Britain have been largely unchanged since the 1980s. There are moves to update these to meet the challenges of the digital age, the age of the internet. If you create media, it is worth keeping abreast of these changes to ensure you stay on the right side of them. This may all sound like doom and gloom in regards to the restrictions that are out there, but there is plenty of material that you can use legally, which we'll look at in the second part of this presentation.